sliding filament theory. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at a relaxed muscle. And then we're going to look at the changes that take place and how it contracts. I need a little point of reference to be, to be marked on here. So I'm going to draw a very faint line straight down the page with a pencil. This line isn't really going to be on our final diagrams, but I just need something as a point of reference. Okay, so there's two protein filaments involved in muscle contraction, actin and myosin. The myosin is the thick one, and I'm going to draw that first. Let's draw it here. It would continue in this direction. I'll draw some dots. The other filaments, if you can name it to yourself, is going to be actin, and there's going to be a bit of overlap with actin. Actin has these binding sites all the way along it. This, this would continue. Actin is a thinner filament, usually drawn in blue. Okay, so on the myosin, we're going to have myosin heads. I'm not going to draw them all the way along. These would repeat all the way along, as would the, the binding sites. They'd be all the way along the length of the actin. I'm not going to draw them all. It takes forever. However, the binding site and the myosin head are not connected at the moment. There's no cross bridge, which is what we call it when that happens because there's a molecule in the way, a protein in the way. And this protein is called tropomyosin. We're going to put some notes down about these now. So this cup, this socket, is called the actin-myosin binding site. We can say is blocked by this green thing, which is tropomyosin. It's a protein, they're not going to ask you too much about it, apart from its role, which is blocking the binding site. So when the myosin head is in the binding site, we can call that an actin-myosin cross bridge, aka this year we're calling it an actinomyosin bridge. Same, same thing, different smell. Again, if you're AQA, they want actino myosin bridge. So that's what it looks like at rest. Let's label these. So we've got, obviously, we've got myosin, this big, thick red dude. We've got the actin, which is the blue filament. We've got the actin myosin binding site. We have this protein which is blocking the binding site. It's called tropomyosin. And we've got these guys here. These are the myosin head. Okay, so we can now look at the difference between a relaxed muscle and a contracting muscle. I started this story really with the video on neuromuscular junctions. A very quick audible recap is that the action potential spreads along the sarcolemma, which is the, just the name for the membrane, the surface membrane of the muscle cell. And that depolarization, the action potential spreads down into the inside of the muscle cell through things called the transverse tubules or T-tubules in towards the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And when the action potential reaches the sarcoplasmic reticulum, it releases calcium ions. So if you're not sure where or how these calcium ions come about, you can revisit the lesson on neuromuscular junctions. But for here, I'm going to say the calcium ions bind. In fact, I'm just going to say the calcium ions cause the tropomyosin to move out of the binding site. Well, what happens now? Now there's nothing blocking there. We, this is going to allow the, the myosin or active myosin cross bridge to be formed. Again, if you're AQA, call it the actinomyosin bridge. Okay, so how's that going to look in diagram form? Well, I want my myosin to stay the same, so I'm going to have him ending there just as he did before it's going to continue dot 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 something like that 
the actin's not going to have moved yet. We've not done any contracting of this. But what has happened is that my tropomyosin has moved. The calcimines bind to it and cause it to change shape a little bit. So I might give him maybe square edges, put it on the side. And the calcium ions I've put in all my diagrams so far as blue squares. So let's have a blue square bound onto the side of it. That leaves the actin myosin binding site free. The binding site is the cup. And then we've got the cross bridge, which is obviously like the rungs on the ladder, if you want to look at it that way. The questions on this are going to examine mostly the role of calcium ions or the role of ATP. I've trawled through all the past papers, as I always do. So what else we want to say here is what the calcium ions do. We can say the calcium ions also activate ATPase. ATPase, you're going to know by now. This is an enzyme, you don't necessarily know what it does. It's like the opposite of ATP synthase. So this is going to catalyze the, the breakdown of ATP into ADP and inorganic phosphate. That's what ATPase does. This leaves lots of, basically it's going to release loads of energy because muscle contraction, would you believe it, takes loads of ATP. So what I might just put in there as well is a little, I'm going to put my enzyme, I'm going to just draw a generic enzyme. And it's activated by more calcium ions, more blue squares. So we've got loads of energy being released. The other way that they like to examine this question is the role of ATP. So we can now sort of follow the role of ATP. So we can say ATP is used, and we can say a few things here. We can say it's mostly, it's gonna be used to change the shape of the myosin head. So we're going to go from an angle like this, so the protein is going to change shape and it's going to be, turn like this. So it's going to pull the actin in a ratchet movement in towards the center of the myosin, which if you remember, is called the M line. This is sometimes known as the power stroke. It's a bit like rowing, a power stroke in rowing. What else is ATP? Well, in fact, I'm going to just elaborate on the power stroke a little bit. It's a ratchet mechanism that continues as long as we've got calcium ions here, then as long as the actin and myosin crossbridge can form, as long as the binding site is open, then this is going to continue. And why, when is the binding site open? Well, when there's calcium ions bound to the troponin. And what releases the calcium ions? Well, in the first place, it's the action potential arriving at the neuromuscular junction. Okay, so what else is ATP used to do? ATP is also useful in muscle contraction to detach the myosin head. So after power stroke, then this is a bit like Velcro. Imagine this, they're being very sticky in here. So it actually would take some energy to, to rip the myosin head out of the binding site. I'm actually going to put like Velcro. I think that's a useful analogy to have. It's also used to return the myosin head back to its resting position. And this is sometimes called the recovery stroke. You could say resting, you could say starting. Resting may be slightly confusing because obviously muscle contraction is still taking place at this point. And this is known as the recovery stroke. Just like a rower, it's not, he's, it takes most effort to pull the, the oar in, but returning the oar to the starting position doesn't happen for free. He's got to put a little bit of energy in to do that too. And lastly, we can say that the ATP is needed to reabsorb calcium ions by active transport. So as soon as the action potential stops the calcium ions. we want this to stop immediately we want a nice sharp control over our muscle and so when when the action potential ends we want to get rid of this calcium as fast as possible and so we use active transport
Okay, so most of the questions are going to be on the role of calcium and the role of ATP. Let's put one final diagram down here to show how the actin has moved. Again, so I've got all my myosins in a nice straight line. What's going to happen now is that the power stroke is going to take this angle from the myosin head and we're going to ratchet them over this way. So again, this distance should be roughly equal, but this time we're going to be facing the other way. Remember, these are going to be all the way along. It's tropomyosin, still be a different shape, still be not covering the binding site, and that's because the calcium ions are bound onto it. Lots of energy for this because we've got loads of ATP being broken down. And now we can see quite clearly that our actin has been pulled towards the center of the myosin. And this is going to continue. As I've said here, this continues. So it, it's a ratchet motion. So just like rowing, it's going to attach and then they're going to reattach to the next binding site and then pull it in and then to the next binding site and pull it in. And then eventually we're going to reabsorb the calcium. The calcium is going to go away. The troponin will change shape. It will come, sorry, the tropomyosin will change shape, come back over the binding site. And then once the binding site is blocked, then we can't form any more cross bridges, then the actin is going to slide backwards back to its resting position. And that is the sliding filament theory.